So how do we solve all this? All these issues of global depletion, knowing and doing. Over the years, I've been proposing two categories of solutions over the past 42 years. First, there needs to be widespread, sweeping education of the public and those with a platform of influence. We essentially need to educate the educated, and we need to reach a higher level of consciousness. It's not about just being aware. And second, we need to implement initiatives based on that education, such as creating policies which open the doors for businesses and help new and also young farmers and help transition existing farms from animal agriculture to plant-based systems, beginning with the reallocation of the $500 billion per year we spend globally subsidizing the meat, dairy, and fishing industries to prop it up. This money could be spent much more wisely and effectively for education and then transitioning purposes. So I have another solution dealing with accountability, which would get us on track much quicker if someone would listen to this. <laughs> and it's what I call the eco and health risk tax. This is something we've never done before because the true cost to our environment and to our own health has always been externalized, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's never been directly paid for with our heads always turned in the opposite direction. Well, you're all familiar with the nutrition fact label, I hope. You should be looking at what you're eating. This happens to be ground beef or ground cow, something that average consumer would purchase. And on this label, you can see that half the calories are from fat. And most of those are from saturated fat, even a gram of trans fat, and quite a bit of cholesterol. Now, all that's not so good. But you don't see not so good on the label anywhere, do you? <laughs> I don't see it. And it also has quite a bit of protein, but it's, it's of the type of protein that's associated with a number of Western diseases after you eat it. And you certainly don't, don't see what resources it took to produce, what's inside that package. Well, consumers need to know what effect this product had on our environment while producing it and what effect it'll have on our health after consuming it. So we introduce the eco and health risk factors first. In the event these, these numbers are a little too complicated, going from, from minus 100 to 100, if that's a little too complicated, we put a little, no, little notation on the, on the label uh, it's something like this. You could say not so good, or, or, or it could say uh, not a good choice, or in, the, or in the future when all this becomes voice activated, a little Siri voice could pop out and slap your hand and say, I wouldn't, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> uh, this is a good start, but it's most important to reflect these factors into costs, and someday with the correct economic formulation and a more gutsy and a and a proper policy change, we may even see this in our meat aisle, a quarter pound beef patty priced at over $4,000, and it'd be a steal at these prices if you had to go back and replace the resources, some of them ancient, in order to produce it. So we need to impose this tax on producers and consumers who generate the most inefficient, resource-depleting food items. This, this scenario of accountability will, of course, be inevitable as we begin to run more and more out of vital resources. Well, this is not a carbon tax, it's not a, it's not a soda tax which would vastly understate the problem. But if we can do this for, for soft drinks in, at Berkeley, <laughs> we should certainly be able to apply this concept to meat and dairy products that affect us on a much, much larger scale. It's a simple concept. Make everyone pay for the resources they're wasting and for the health costs incurred by society. While truly impossible to come up with a replacement cost for natural resources that we destroy, estimates by environmental economists place the value of our natural resources that we use up to $63 trillion worth of goods and services per year. But our current economic and political systems in place treat these resources and services as if they had zero value, with no one paying for their use. That isn't right, of course, and it's catching up to us.